How many are you producing in a 24 hour period? 24 hours, 200,000 done. There are certain teams that we have partnerships with, of course, like Ineos. We do sell to others on the second team. There so. must be others as well. How did you land on the ratio that's involved in the beach fuel gels? Science in Sport, or SIS, have been making sports nutrition since 1992 and support 320 elite athletes worldwide, including Ineos Grenadiers. That long-term partnership has seen them fuel some of the sport's best riders, including tour winners and world champions. But how is this turned into this, the humble gel, and what SIS claim to be the winning formula, allowing endurance athletes to push their boundaries further than ever. I've been given full access to SIS's factory floor to find out. Here I am then, got my high vis I'm outside, SIS factory HQ. I'm about to head in and see how to make one of these and a few other tasty little products. So I'm told this is where all raw ingredients arrive. Production is what I'm really interested in today, is how these gels, how these bars are actually made, and how they're processed and ready in your hand when you're on the bike and you need some fuel. Head of engineering, Brett Whitfield, knows all there is to know about making bars, gels and ride fuel. He is ready to meet me and talk me through just how raw materials are processed and turned into the ready-to-eat food we use out on our bikes. He even has a beard net for me. Brett, thanks for showing us around Thank here. You. No in problem. The production side of things. So this is where all the ingredients arrive, I presume. So I've seen it come in and then it's brought in here. What happens next? Right then, what's going on in here? So this is where we weigh out the minor ingredients. So quite an important part of the process. We have our operator at the weigh, at the weigh table and it's moved up onto the rip and tip station with the rest of the bulk ingredients. The rip and yeah, tip. The, the rip and tip gum. Oh, I'm excited for the rip and tip. Let's, Let's go. go. <laughs> so we've got a two millimeter sieve, which is designed to remove any physical contaminants up to two millimeters. These guys are mixing uh, Go Electrolyte. Okay. Yeah, so added to the IBC here, and we can go on to see how it's blended in a minute. Right, Brett, we've come from the rip and tip, from one platform to another, and I can see where the rip and tip is. I can also see the massive jug that I'm calling it. I know that's not the technical name. Yeah. Being rolled around, so I'm presuming that's the next step in the process. It certainly is. And how much product is in that IBC? Uh, can be up to uh, 800 kilos. Depending on the size of the product type, that can be over 1,000 if you're doing, say, 500 gram fills. On one of the blenders, we can go through 30 in a 10 hour shift. Yeah, if you're running around the clock, that's 60. And with both blenders, we can basically blend up to 120 in a 20 hour day. Yeah, so we'll go see how it's all packed off now. is really important. It's a metal detector. So as the product passes through the detection head, it's trying to pick up on any potential contamination which is below the two mil. It's already been sieved out on the rip and tip. Uh, so yeah, this detects down to one and a half millimeters of, uh, of metal. The product's then rejected into oh, the wow, other side okay. of the conveyor. So you've had one rejection today. More than likely a false reject, it's a false positive. Okay. We, have the, uh, we have the system set quite tight, so we'd rather have one or two false rejects and make sure we catch actual contamination, if there is any, than over-tune it and potentially let something through. And then it all finishes up here, ready to be boxed up. And that is how Go Electrolyte Drink Mix is made. Now, time to see how SIS make their gels. Right, we're on to gels now and that is such an integral part of any cyclist nutrition when they're riding. I'm really intrigued to see how these are made. Raw ingredients once again coming in. Rip yeah. and tip, we rip and tip in again? I feel like there needs to be a rip yeah, and tip dance. It's a common theme, isn't it? So <laughs> rip, ripping and tipping into the uh, bulk hopper. So uh, again, the minor ingredients are weighed in the weigh rooms as we've already been through. And then they, they're tipped through the two millimeter sieve into the bulk hopper. What's this big tube for? That's where it's all coming out, is it? Yeah, so that's how it feeds into the, uh, into the mixing system. Bulk ingredients, uh, as we've seen, are dropped into the hopper next door. 
Um, this system here is a vacuum system, so it generates a vacuum. When the valve's opened, the materials are pulled into the mixing part of the system and then pumped into the vessel, and then it's all circulated and mixed over time. That's it in a, in a nutshell. Uh, so yeah, that's just pumped out of the bottom of the system, up and over into the buffer tanks. Ah, okay. So into here. Yeah, and then that is pumped through to next door and packed off. So these are just full of gel? Yeah. Wow. Stacked full. It's fired up out of the way with one of those in your pocket. <laughs> Right, we've come to where the gels are really being made now. I'm seeing gels just flying along this conveyor belt, but talk us through what's happening right now. Yeah, so you've seen how they're mixed. Uh, basically, the next stage is it's pumped through into the header tank. Uh, the film is fed through the machine, formed over the top of the machine, sealed vertically, then horizontally. Then, in essence, you've got the bottom part of the pack formed. At that point, the nozzles can descend into the uh, formed sachet, deposit the product, it's then sealed above the product and then cut onto the, uh, onto the belt as you can see here. And do you do the same gel each day or do you change around the recipe or the different types? Because there's a, there's a lot of different gels in SOS and Ray. Yeah, so the beauty, the beauty of this line is when it's running, it's, it runs. So uh, we tend to try and campaign the products. So you'll do one gel on a particular day or a shift and then change over and run something else. And I'm looking at them coming along the conveyor belt. It's pretty much eight gels every second, every batch just coming through. So how many are you producing in a 24 hour period? Yeah, 24 hours, get around uh, 200,000 done. 200,000. So going somewhere. That is a lot. That's a lot of energy. Definitely. That would, that would get me to the moon. So this bit of kit here is your x-ray, similar to the metal detector, but we need the x-ray for this operation because of the aluminium in the, uh, in the film. So this can de detect down to one and a half mil of, uh, of soda glass. So you can pick up on glass, ceramics, metals, any of that kind of stuff. You can see the image on the screen here. Anything's picked up, it's rejected into any of these bins. Again, we'd never, never see it needed, but it's obviously nice to have it if you do need it. And then we're going into this mad robot here. Yeah, so this is your uh, secondary packaging machine. Um, this packs into the uh, what we call SRPs for uh, retail and direct to customers as well. So each of the shuttles is driven by electromagnets so they can accelerate and decelerate individually, which helps us to get the most capacity out of the machine. Wow, and then from there they box up and off they go. That's it. Into my belly. Straight in the Rob Meller is essentially chief chef at SIS, or as he likes to call it, the mad scientist in charge of all the recipes. Rob, I've just witnessed how everything is made on the factory floor. It's been really cool to see the process, but how do you actually land on the recipe for these gels, choose, how, how do you decide what goes into them? One way is that we take learnings from like the top level of sport. We look at the ingredients that the guys are doing with regards to dosing, such as protein amounts, carbohydrates, these things. And then that's taken down into the lab. And uh, we look at different formats, such as gels, powders, drinks, also bars. And we think about what is the best way to deliver those um, ingredients into the systems of sort of riders, players, whichever way that is. After that, we make a uh, sort of bench samples within the lab. We test things out. We send them out to taste panels. Uh, we see it, we get feedback. We make sure that we're trying to put on the best product that we can. And then after that, we take it out and into the factory to Brett's team. And I was about to ask you about the gels because there's quite a range on offer with, with different sort of mixes involved. What are the main differences, say, for instance, between your isotonic gel and, and your Vita fuel gel in terms of ingredients? So the difference is, obviously, with the isotonic gel, it's a single source carbohydrate. So it's just a standard maltodextrin uh, with water and the stuff that I mentioned before. Uh, with, the, with regards to the beta fuel gel, this was determined for a more endurance type situation. So um, it's a dual source carbohydrate. So within that, you've got a maltodextrin plus a fructose in there. And this obviously allows you to take in uh, more of that fuel. 
How much time and kind of effort goes into developing this sort of recipe? What, what went into beta fuel? So uh, I suppose the beta fuel is a, a weird one because that is something that came really down from the, the top level. Uh, it, was, it was created with Ineos cycling, cycling team back in 2018. It was originally a powder. Using uh, the learnings that we got from that and how I think the, the man himself, Sir Dale Brailsford, said it, I want to that tournament was all about, I think it was a Giro Italia, the Italia, which was all about fueling is what he said. And then we looked at the science, we looked, they took the learning from that and then we created the range. And we said, you know, uh, what is the best way to, or the format to put this in? Uh, when we re-evaluated it and did a relaunch, we did it, we did the gels. So we got the new Tropic gel, the standard beta fuel gel, and then we also did a chew as well. And yeah. how did you land on the ratio that's involved in the beta fuel gels? So that comes from the, again, that comes from the performance solutions guys. Uh, this is the idea of how science and the literature has moved on. So originally when we created the beta fuel back in the day and it was a powder, it was a two to one ratio between glucose to fructose. That moved on and uh, we looked at this, the science changed and we figured out that with a one to 0 0.8 ratio of glucose to fructose, not only could you load more carbohydrate, at the same time, uh, it would you get a, a boost in performance compared to the two to one ratio, but uh, at the same time, it would so it would sort of you would get less GI distress from that. So I think you mentioned earlier that you'd taken stuff before you'd had like gut distress things like that. The, at this kind of at these ratios, we found uh, with studies that we've done in house showed that actually depending on which beta fuel product you use, whether it was the chew, whether it was the gel or the powder, that that was complete, a complete reduction in any of that. So it was easy to take. So beta fuel did arise, as you said, from working with some of your, your high level teams, specifically Ineos. Um, is that something that you still do, working with teams to, to develop products? Yeah, that's a massive part of our development. I like I said, it's what we call uh, in-house performance solutions. Uh, we do. We work with those teams, we, we go out, we get with partnerships with many sort of uh, professional teams. The Met, obviously, INEOS has been a huge one for us. It's been like uh, one of our flagship partnerships for the entire time we do. Uh, some of the development that we do is predominantly just for elites, so it's what we would call the SIS lab range. This is the stuff that might not be as commercially viable. Um, that might sort of the average cyclist might not be interested in because it's probably got a very high a ratio of uh, it's got a very high carb hydrate in there or protein or something and they're never going to be putting themselves through those kind of stresses. Is that kind of trickle down into the products that are available yeah, to buy? Of course, for like I say, the main one, the best one being beta fuel. That, like I say, that started out as as a complete elite concept and then it trickles out down. We did the commercial launch. So we, we knew we had the science, we knew it worked. And obviously we got some great people in the team who, were, who can get out there and really explain why that boosts performance. And for me, probably the best gel product on the market. Do you get pro teams looking to try and buy your products? Yeah, so um, there are certain teams that we have partnerships with, of course, like Ineos. Uh, but at the same time, we do have a range called SIS Lab Core Range. And what that allows is for professional teams or other sports to come in and, and there are products that they can buy uh, from a completely different website that's not available to like the commercial stuff, which they can then purchase. Can you name any cycling teams which buy your products which you're not allowed to? Talk um, about? Obviously Ineos. Uh, and we do sell to some of the cycling teams. There yeah. must be others as well. Who, who um, else? Uh, I can't tell you. I go on. I, I, it's, a, it's a secret. It's, it's SIS Lab. It's, it's very under wraps. I can't tell you. Okay, tell me off camera. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. It has been really interesting to come here to the SOS factory and find out all about the thought that goes into the fuel that I'm using out on the bike and also how that thought is put into making the products which I consume when I'm riding and you may do at home too. It has been pretty incredible just to see the scale involved and the amount of food which is being made per day by this incredible team of people. 200,000 gels in 24 hours is just nuts. And the end of it all, all that food comes here, packaged up, boxed, ready to be shipped around the world, excuse me, out on your bike, riding up those mountains. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video, you found it interesting and useful, and if you did, please give it a big thumbs up, big thanks Gracias for having us over and trusting me not to eat too much of the food. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.